Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Lander by Intrepid Game. It plays two to four players, takes about um, an hour per player, and is for ages 14 and up. In the game Lander, you're basically a small starting colonization ship heading down to Mars, and you're attempting to fortify your company's uh, growth before the main ship gets there and everybody else is going to be competing with their own unique companies fortifying the area as best as possible. You'll be getting certain action cards to utilize with your crew which you will have a leader as well as different crew slots. You're going to be able to take different actions such as buying cards, growing your different regions, uh, expanding your different regions, and of course trying to score the uh, certain re requirements like maybe uh, you need to have like, an expansion master done or a logistical planner or a science honors and there's these tracks it's similar to in some ways Catan like the longest road and the biggest army there's some cards that are functionally similar to this you'll be gathering resources on your turn which you will utilize to purchase certain things to gather you new recruits as well as hopefully achieve uh, missions that come out throughout the game you'll have your own personal missions as well as missions that you can complete in the public good and if you can get a certain amount of points or depending on the game mode if you play through five years and you have the most points or stars at at the end of the year mark and or uh, last round of the game you'll be the winner of the game lander a mars exploration and expansion game okay let's go ahead and take it down below i'll show you what's included in the game and then we'll tell you a little bit about how to play around or so and then my review of what i thought of this game so here we have the game Lander and all the components and it's set up for two players. And there's a lot of stuff to get into. So we're first going to go ahead and discuss all the different things in the game. I'm not gonna tell you all the different setups and how to play each and every, every game mode because there are three, at least for what I have, as far as the basic simulation, the planned arrival and the early arrival, but we do have it set up for early arrival. So that way you have a, little, a good taste of the game. As you can see, like I said before, the game is going to come with uh, four players worth of player boards and tokens and all that good stuff the rule book and of course the box for the game this down below is the field setup this is the planet mars and these are all the pieces that are surrounding it you're going to take them randomly from this little tray here take, taking them uh, blindly and then placing them down setting up this little grid so that the entire sp space of mars here is filled Every player is going to get a player board and pieces in their color, and you're going to set up your early arrival from 5 all the way to 1, as well as you're prepared for year to end at no, moving to yes when you are prepared. Every player is going to get two uh, characters or crew members, and they can choose to have one of them be a leader and the other one be a crew member. Remember, though, that your crew leader is going to have a specific ability. Like, for instance, this guy here says that each year at the starting phase, you can use the leadership ability of any one of your crew members because in general you're only able to use the leadership ability of your leader and the same can be said for these characters as well and of course they have attachment slots on this player board as well these are the event cards throughout the game in which every single year you're basically going to flip one of these over and the player who is the starting player will get to choose an option of either a or b where something unique and interactive will happen every single year this is the crew deck along with the top crew card well which will allow you to take that character and place it in one of your slots or move it into your leadership slot if you'd like these are action item and training cards you'll be getting those every year as well as the ability to buy them as actions for a certain currency and they do different things the action cards can be sometimes used on other players turns or there are things that will help you throughout the game with the board state the items will help your crew members in some way giving them some kind of ability or bonus and your training cards are also going to be utilizing with your crew members they're going to give you stuff like engineering boost and whatnot these are the resource cards you have like it looks like wood or or some kind of metal energy and food basically the three different types of resources if you've ever played uh, settlers of Catan before these are similar to the wood sheep and uh, stone type cards but you're just having these three specifically Every game is also going to begin with three mission cards up. If you're playing with the uh, early arrival mode, you're going to be t taking three silvers out. And whenever a new one comes out, you're just going to put a silver down. But other game modes may allow you to start with one gold and the option of taking silver or gold. Each player is also going to get two gold cards that ran up from the top of this deck. These are basically achievements you're trying to successfully obtain throughout the game, uh, such as, oh, you need uh, required for moving along. So you need a certain amount of crew members 
numbers and you're going to need a certain amount of resilience and strate uh, strategic uh, values as well as resources to pay to gain these cards here and why do you want these cards well these are the value in the game in which you're going to be uh, trying to obtain the highest amount or if you're playing this mode specifically it's just going to be 10 in which there's one more year afterwards so getting 10 stars is kind of the goal these are the three different, I guess you would call them uh, uh, advancements throughout the game that you can have. I'm not sure the name of them, but basically there's going to be three different sets. You'll shuffle them and deal them out randomly, and then you're going to choose uh, one from each. And they're kind of like the longest road and largest army. If you don't know what that is from Catan, the idea for this one is the class level marker. Whoever's the highest class level, starting at 10, is going to get one point or one star. This one here is a mission star marker. So for each mission you're completing, you're going to be getting uh, certain rewards. And then there's the expansion master as well, allowing you to whoever has the largest expanded area on the board here. You'll be utilizing your tokens. Whoever is the farthest ahead will be placing that, showing that they control this card. These can kind of change control in certain ways as the game goes on. If, for instance, this player here has five expansion and then for some reason blue ends up getting a six then his is going to go off and he will now have control of this specific card or sector and he's going to have two points or two stars to his name there's a bunch of reference cards in the game that will help you understand how the game functions as well as a bunch of other cards that you'll be utilizing depending on the game mode in this specific scenario we're not using any of these three there's certain symbols on the right hand side that will tell you whether you put them in or not based on that specific mode and then the rest of these pieces here are simply the additional little uh, sectors or areas in which you're going to be placing down on the game board, allowing you to expand the uh, planet of Mars and hopefully gather some more valuable resources throughout the game. When you set up the game, uh, the starting player is going to be the player who can flick their little uh, token closest to the magnifying glass. So if this is the case, then the red player is going to be the player who gets this token here. And he is going to set one of his tokens in the uh, in the top area of one of these spaces around here. And the top area is always going to be the lowest cost, or generally the lowest cost, I should say. And you're going to be going, remember in the board, you're going to be going counterclockwise. So from one to three to four. So you'll place this guy here. And then the next player, blue, will go ahead and place one. And then red, uh, oh, sorry, and then blue's gonna place again. So kind of like a 10 where it goes first player, second player, second player, first player, first player, second player. And you'll do that until you, everybody has three of these. And remember to try and space it out because it's gonna be important to space these out so that way you'll have more opportunity to place down and expand your territories. And that's pretty much all the things in this game, quite a bit. Everybody has, of course, this early arrival order op uh, options, which tells you free orders, as well as any time orders, things you can do on your turn as many times as you'd like. The one action you can perform on your turn, as well as some uh, ones that are not used as much. And then over here, you can negotiate as well as consolidate cards, which in turn gives more of a social aspect to the game. Anyway, that is Lander for you and everything included. Let's go ahead now. I'll take you down below. I will show you how basically a year Year would go and uh, then how you would necessarily win one of these specific setups and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, so we're ready to begin a two-player game of Lander, and I've set it up for two players. I changed it a little bit to make it more consolidated, so we'll have some space to place around here. You definitely need more space than this to play this game, but this should be enough to give you an idea of how a single year works. To begin, like I said before, the starting player is going to try and flick one of their tokens to this hourglass, and whoever is the closest will begin, so we just went ahead and had Red do that. We've also already done the pre-setup where everybody has their two guys and their two gold, as well as the three spaces on the board. And uh, they've got their observational track at five, as well as their prepare for year end at no. The first event card is up, and that's where we're going to begin the game. And this red player is going to get to choose to do A or B. And it says the colony experience is a temporary surplus in supplies. Choose where these resources should be allocated. Do you want them to A, have all, all players can use any combinations of resources to expand, uh, to expand this year? So instead of having specific costs, which is on this card here, to do certain things, it's just the required amount, not necessarily the type. Or B, all players can use any combination of resources resources to upgrade this year. Okay, so in this case, there's expand and upgrade. So upgrade can be of any combination or expand can be of any combination. You could use any of these three as long as you use two resources. And it's kind of going to depend on what you want to do. So maybe red's going to want to, oh, I don't know, expand this year. So now everybody can expand using any resource types they would so choose. 
Uh, that is it for the event that will stay until the next year, in which case it will be replaced. And then we're going to move on to the uh, expanding phase of the beginning of every year, in which a player, red player, will go ahead and take one of these guys here and place it down on the map anywhere he or she chooses to place it on. If you do not place it adjacent to one of your owned uh, little triangles here or sectors, then you're not going to be able to place it on this. So you have to be aware of whether or not you want to do that. Sometimes it's better to place on a space next to an opponent because that tile may or may not be as good as some other tiles. After that, then the player is going to be able to take one of these uh, selector tokens or uh, pieces and place it down adjacent to any tile they have. So in this case, he's got this one, this one, and this one. So uh, he or she can place on either of these two, these two, or these two. Very good placement for red. And so I think we'll just go ahead and place it on this one here. And it is adjacent, so that works. Then the next player is going to do so as well, taking one of these. And not so useful. Maybe we'll give it to uh, red over here, placing it right there. And then blue is going to go ahead and place as well. And blue will take this green one over here. After everybody's done that by expanding and placing, then you're going to move on to resources. And players are going to gather resources based on the uh, number presented next to their uh, highest tile token. So if, for instance, this was the case where all three of these are placed on here because he has upgraded, he would be getting five as opposed to one. So five is much, much better, but unfortunately he doesn't have that, but he will at some point. So blue is gonna end up getting, for green, he's gonna get two green cards. So he'll take these two green cards here. He'll get one blue card, and then he's gonna get one of these uh, gray cards here. And that is going to be his resources for this specific year. A red, on the other case, is going to get one green card, two of these gray cards, and one blue card and placing it over here for his resources or her resources. Okay, and then after that moves on, we're going to give out the training item and action cards. Everybody's gonna get one training, one activity, and, or sorry, action item, and then two, uh, two action cards. One, one, and two. And you can place it next to your resources if you like. One, one, and two. After they have those, then you're going to go ahead and start performing your early arrival order options and then an official order op option as well and you'll be looking at this board here to determine what actions you wish to take let's just go ahead and go over them pretty quickly here you can earn an accolade uh, you can play anytime actions so certain actions are going to basically be uh, uh, allowing you to use them at any point in time and it will say on the card specifically if you can use it at any time or whether it requires you to play it on your turn most actions are actually going to cost you uh, your turn but there are some that are different uh, these over here are the accolades by the way so if you have the largest area or you have the most science etc etc you can place your tokens on here just to symbolize that you are currently the owner of that specific card there's also attaching, moving, and discarding item cards. So for instance, if this, this uh, red player here had this card here, that's two food. There's a certain uh, cost to it, and if you can afford the cost, you can place it on your character, and it will give you some kind of bonus. And it also says at the bottom here, at the start of each of your uh, years, collect two extra food when resources are dealt, which would give you two extra. So these can be very useful attaching them to your characters. Remember, however, the characters only have four slots regardless unless you have cards that say otherwise and you'll be putting them behind your character card so they will gain bonuses in certain traits and whatnot and I think the other side of this tells you, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a card that tells you the traits and all that but uh, it basically gives you higher in green or blue or uh, yellow and you're trying to gather more and more and more because it will help you be able to play certain cards because all cards have a specific type of requirement. Uh, there's also the ability to trade two of the same resource. So for instance, if Red had two green resources here, he or she could discard these two and choose a new resource of a different type. There is upgrading, and these are all the free orders and anytime orders that you can use. You can do this as many times on your turn as you possibly can. These now get into once a turn, and that is going to be to upgrade. So in this case, to upgrade, it will normally be a blue and a gray, but that can change based on event cards like this. So for instance, I'll show you how red could use an upgrade card. So you could go ahead and spend this and this, which is the cost, allowing you to upgrade. So you'd send these to the discard pile. 
and then you would take one of your tokens and place it on any of your owned territories in the next slot counterclockwise. So we'll actually go ahead and place it here because it goes from one to three, meaning next year, he or she is going to get three green resources as opposed to one. Very, very useful. And that would actually end their turn. It would go on to the next player here. And the next player would be able to use any of these orders as well. Or maybe we'll go ahead and talk about expanding. And expanding is generally going to be one green and one of these gray. But luckily, because of this, it can be any two cards regardless of type. So we'll go ahead and still probably use these two. Uh, actually... Let's go ahead and just use two green. So that way I can go ahead and upgrade as well on my next turn. That's pretty useful. So we'll go ahead and expand. And expanding works very similarly to the be beginning of your actions. You'll take one of these, you'll place it where you want. And in this case, I think I'll place it here. And then you're gonna take one of your uh, tokens here and place it adjacent to one of your colony sectors. So I'll place this right over here. And that would be the end of his turn. It would go on to the next player's turn here. There's acquiring a crew member card, which is a cost of a blue and a green. So if in this case he had a blue and a green, he could take one of these guys here and place it onto his crew board, moving his leader over. And he or she, the character that you get, will have some kind of bonus ability. Passive abilities are always active and otherwise some, some kind of I think are once a game and whatnot. Now that is how you acquire new characters. And there's a total of four slots for your crew members. Then you're going to go over here, which is purchasing all the different types of cards. So you can purchase actions, items, and training. To purchase the red cards, it'll be two blue. To purchase one of the gray, uh, one of the brown cards, it'll be one gray. And an orange card is only going to cost you one food. So for instance, if he or she wanted to take one of the orange cards, the training card, you can go ahead and place it here, and that would be their turn. Then, of course, go to, go to blue's turn again, and they could choose to maybe play an action card if they wanted. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the action cards here. All right, this is, there we go, these guys here. This is a killer crew member. Um, so this is a fanatical trait. You need to have that in order to successfully be able to defeat, uh, destroy opponents. I think it's kill a crew member from another player with at least two crew members, and this can't be prevented by a meta pack. So there's certain requirements you'll have to uh, have uh, in, in your crew total or among one of your crew. So in this case, it says among all of your crew. So if you have a fanatical trait, like that one there, and then you had six yellow, and you had six green, and you had six blue among these characters, which you don't, but if you did, you could then go ahead and play this card and kill one of your opponent's uh, crew members pretty useful and this is free crew which is going to tell you uh, how many types of crew members is it whether it's going to be all of your crew or just simply one of them and this is a uh, two green and two yellow so in this case he could actually play this one and it says acquire a crew member without using resources that's really good so he or she can go ahead and use that card and then get a new crew member and place it down in a slot pretty useful so that would save you from being able to not be able to purchase one and then we we'll move on to red's turn over here the other things you can do is use a leadership ability some of them will actually be passives that just happen automatically others will be a use and if that happens generally speaking it's going to be an order uh there's observing which is basically doing nothing and how that works is you're simply going to take this off of the track and pass to the next player and uh, observing works pretty simply like this. It's basically like a pass, but it doesn't force you to end the year for yourself. So you can pass, 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 pass. And then after that, you have to force yourself to end the year, allowing the rest of the players to keep going until they can't do any more actions. So this kind of gives you an, uh, an option of determining what players are going to do and what you might want to do based on their choices. It's a little game of chicken or chance, I would say. There's also completing missions. These are the three missions that are currently out. When one mission is completed, a new one comes out. It tells you the requirements of it on the card, as well as what you gain as far as points go or stars. Uh, let's look at this one. So this one says required among your crew to complete. And there's no special criteria, but you have to have a diplomatic guy and it has to have six. And it has three resources of food. And if you can afford that, you'll get this. You'll put it face down. And that's going to count as one or put it face up. And that's going to count as one star. And in a lot of game types, basically whoever has 10 stars is one more round. So it's important to gather these. This is how you win the game, along with utilizing these tracks here. So trying to complete missions is going to be important, especially midway through the game. The other two mission cards you'll be having in your hands are these gold ones, and when you complete them, you'll draw a new gold one. These are basically the same as the silver ones, but they're more expensive and more challenging to acquire. Uh, the last two things are you can negotiate, uh, which is basically allowing you to uh, trade. And then there is Consolidate, which you can go ahead and discard three of your uh, of your three types of cards here to draw three new ones of your choice and only keep one of those. 
And that's the idea. That's all the things you can do in the game. You'll just keep going back and forth until eventually you have uh, chosen to end by no longer having any more observation and you would push your markers from no to yes. And once every single player has done that, the beginning of the year rounds will take effect. You'll be flipping over a new event card, having this token move over to the next player. This player will choose A or B. You'll be placing down more of these pieces onto the board and getting a free uh, colony to place down, expanding. You'll gather your new resources, which will be more every single year. And then you're also going to take these cards here, one, one, and two. And finally going back in orders amongst the players until rinse and repeat. I think you get the idea. The player who gathers 10 of these stars first, there's one more round left over. And then whoever has the most stars on the last round or year of the game is going to be the winner of Lander. Uh, the space mining and exploration tactical crazy cool little game. Anyway, I think I got the idea. Let's come up and talk about it. All right. So before we get into my caveats, which I don't think I have any, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get a special guest on here because he's rather good at uh, giving his critique on this game, and I think he'd be rather useful for this. Plus, you guys are probably tired of just seeing me in these videos. So ready? <sighs> what am I doing here? You are going to be talking about the game Lander by Intrepid Games. Okay, You're going to awesome. play this, and uh, I think you'd be a rather good uh, use of your opinion on this one. Well, but, I'm honored. Yeah, but I, th I think you'll. I think you guys will get some uh, unique. Uh, in, what, what do you want to call it? Like perspective. Perspective, insight. insight. Yeah, those things with Grant. All right, let me start off here. So. What did you think about Lander? I personally thought that it had a unique Catan feel. Yeah, I can see that. Which is what I thought it was going to be kind of like. Just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, it's going to be Catan again. But it's a lot more than that mm -hmm. and quite different, in fact. And yeah, you don't have the, the random aspect of Catan, which is one of the reasons why I like Catan, because there's no, per se, perfect move, because the dice can just not be in your favor. This one here is... Not as random, in fact. Yeah, you are specifically random. choosing where you want to place and how you want to place, and you know how much resources you're going to get every round. And when we first started this game, our first thought was, oh, this is going to take a bit, because it seemed like it was going to start off Yeah, like slow. the first round, you have like four or five resources. It's like, well, you can't do very much. And the next round, you have like seven. You're like, well, I still can't do that much. Then the next round, you have like 14, and then all of a sudden, it starts really going it ramps up like on tur a year four and then five you're starting to gather quite a few mission cards our now, first game we were playing kind of slow we we're like well how, how are we going to complete these missions they cost like so many resources then we're, then on round five we got like 10 points each and that that triggers the end game and that was yep. it yeah, it was really quick. Uh, it's got a lot of different modes of play, too. So if you're a newer player that's never played any games like this before, mm -hmm. you can start off with the beginning basic one. And you can go all the way to the one that includes a bunch of extra cards. So it actually has like some expanded content already set up in this. They also pl uh, play mo more or less the same. They just add uh, additional complexity to it. New cards, new crew members, and all that. I think there's a couple of new rules in the game involving whether or not you're going to have crew members. Well, you pick the first one, or you can pick the next one. So you have more choice as far as that goes, but don't quote me on that the I board at the time we put yeah we didn't, didn't do that, that uh when we were uh when you build the map too it, it doesn't get super large in a two-player game but in a three and a four-player game it definitely can expand quite a bit because you can expand well, once a year it also depends on if the the people are taking the upgrade action to make the things bigger or taking the expand action to make the board bigger and that would also depend too on whether or not you want to complete certain requirements like this one here or the expansion master because expanding yeah, it, this is going to get you points. Construction master, you know, construct uh, based on what terrain you're using. So, uh, what did you think overall of this game? Like, for me, personally, with the component quality, I thought that was really well done. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I liked all of the... I like less luck, so I'm more of a... I'm more into this game than I am for Catan, just because I enjoy knowing what's going to happen on my next turn. But there's still a little bit, which as far as the cards go, yeah. I had a really good time with this game. And surprisingly so for me, because I wasn't sure what to expect from it, and I thought I was going to be, I was nervous that it was going to be a slower game. Yeah, I, I like games that are more in the middle of luck. Catan's the perfect example, because there's a lot of strategy in it, but it's not entirely strategy. It's also not entirely luck either. Um... So this this is fine in terms of that. Uh, it's got cool. Uh, I like the theme of it as well. 
being able to go to Mars, and you're like the you're like the starter crew. You're like the guys that are just getting everything yeah, ready. There's, you're, there's a huge colony ship, and you're the initial uh, crew going to set up everything. And you're doing like a corporate warfare while also trying not to uh, you know mess up the colony too bad because you you still have to have a new place to live when you're done. You just want to be the market leaders. And it does a really good job of that theme. In yeah. fact, it comes through really quickly once he explained the theme to me. If we started getting into it, I'm like, oh, I actually see the theme to this really well, really quickly. It wasn't it didn't feel pasted on, which I I was nervous. I don't like games that are like more like reprints or rehashes. Or I kind of like the corporate warfare theme. It doesn't happen all that often either. It's very unique. It has this timer option that we didn't really use because we play pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but I can see how this could be of use. If you flip this timer over and somebody doesn't finish their turn... Uh, then you'll they, that player is forced to take the observe action, which could potentially end their actions for that year. The action cards are a lot of fun, and they make the game potentially pretty aggressive depending yeah. on what cards you get and then there, there's yeah. thematic stuff like uh like poisoning someone's food or plasma bombs or even relocating entire structures covertly and then you have item cards which basically increases your character's abilities or usefulness and training cards which actually will make them more intelligent and have mm -hmm. better stats which you'll be able to utilize for things like succeeding in certain missions it'll tell you on the mission that's a bad example this is a better one having six of this engineering and four well, science four science and four engineering so you'll need to try and figure out ways to you, you can make one of your guys a powerhouse mm -hmm. if you really want him, want to and protect that guy like no other I had one guy that could have five slots he was super smart super powerful and it was hard to remove right uh, you had to remove him twice or something like that in order to mm -hmm. get rid of him so i kept that character so there's definitely i think characters better than others in this game and it encourages you to uh, ty typically diversify your uh your investments or else you You're put too much on character. one character it's likely that someone will uh try and take him out so you'll have one character that i think might be a four out of five and maybe another it's like a 3.5 out of five then you can go well i want this four to stay alive but if I give this 3.5 an extra card, it kind of balances them out, and then it makes him have to choose between them as opposed to knowing what the obvious choice is, which I think is pretty cool. But then again, it might just be my personal bias as to which, what I like better in this game. I prefer, personally like the idea of expanding and moving around the board, and, and then, of course, going after the silver and gold achievements later on in the game as opposed to kind of mixing it up on t round Do we talk about how the event cards have choices on them? Yeah, oh, I, talked, I, I showed them in the review, but yeah, you'll be able to choose between A and B, which is really cool. It has a lot of additional... Uh, Sometimes they're, they're good things, and other times it's like, well, this year there's a drought. Do we want to take it out of power or food? Which can benefit you as opposed to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, you, you could be heavily invested in titanium, so it doesn't matter that your food production is cut short. Yep. So, I mean, overall, like I said, Lander is a really fun game. If you guys like games like this, but you want a little less randomness, a little more aggressive tactics, and there's also a lot more options, which I mm -hmm. guess can go either way for certain people, being able to choose between all the different cards and how you want to play. And all of these actions are things you can do. And there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12 things you can do on your turn as well as the top five or six. the actions aren't all that complex. No, they're really easy. Yeah. You buy one of the three cards, expand or upgrade, and then, you know, acquiring a new crew member and all the rest of them are the things that you don't really use all that often. Yeah. But when you do, they're really important. Uh, what did you think? I thought it was good. Um, it was uh, a simple-ish, uh, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call this, area control? Uh, I think area control, tableau management as tableau, well. Yeah. Uh, which, which this I haven't seen a game like this, ha a game that's similar to these games, have like a tableau control where you're actually working with your crew members and whatnot. And oh, and you like like the observation track too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, it it didn't come across as good in a two player game. It, it kind of was just like I passed. Well, I also passed. Why well, pass? Why well, pass? Well, I, that got kind of boring. But in the multiplayer game, sometimes there's not a particular move that's decent for you in that particular action, so you just pass. Then it, maybe one time it comes back around, uh, you know, it's like more maybe a land space thing. opened up or something. Or maybe you have a kill card you want to use, but the character, you, the player you want to use it on doesn't have a character, and so when they play a new one, bam, you can use it on them. I thought of the observational track as a different thing, and that was as the game went on, I would pass just to see what he would do to determine whether I wanted to play a card. So like a, not pressure luck, but like a, I'm not sure I want to play this just yet. I have to see what he does. Okay, he's kind of out of actions now. Seems like he's kind of empty. Now I'll drop my card because now I know it's going to be safe. Or at least as safe as I possibly can make it. But, oh yeah, Lander. So if you guys are interested in taking a look at the game, you can go ahead and look down below and pick up the game. 
it's it's really fun. I enjoyed it. Yep, I did too. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out our links here on Kickstarter and uh, Unfiltered. <laughs> Like, subscribe, and comment. Do all uh, those things. As share. well as checking out our website. Unfilteredgamer.com. Where we have... Kickstarter lists, board games, and more. Yep. As well as blogs. Giveaways. What are we giving away right now? Uh, Santorini. That's right. It's a good two-player game. Don't play as well three and four. No, not for you. You get nothing. As well as checking out our friends. You can pick some. Uh, so we got uh, Show Me How to Win. Yep. She's pretty cool. Uh, before You Play. Yep. She's pretty cool. Uh, Ferdinand. He's pretty cool. He's a cool dude. Yep. And if you want, check out Lander down below. You can go ahead and try and pick up the game. It's it's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to colonizing Mars with you next time. That works.